Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of TCR Express. I'm your digital media editor, Warren Fry, and with me I have... Russell Hickson, staff writer at the Journal of Commerce, broadcasting from my luxurious East Vancouver in my bedroom studios. And I'm uh, broadcasting from my not-so-luxurious downtown condo with a <laughs> den, as the real estate people call it, which is wow. actually basically just a walk-in closet, which is my office. So there you go. <laughs> your walk-in office. Rather. My walk-in office, yeah, as opposed to most offices where you crawl in or repel. Anyway, yeah. um, what's been happening in the past week for construction there, Russell? Well, um, let's go south of the border. Uh, I chatted with Alberta's man in Washington, D.C. His name is James, uh, I, I don't think I'm going to pronounce his last name properly, Rajat or Rayot. Um, and uh, I had a good chat with James about what his work is. And he uh, spends most of his time in Washington, D.C. meeting with uh, people in Congress, senators, um, members of the House of Representatives, um, all sorts of various politicians, and he says that he tells the story of Alberta, and he talks about how, uh, you know, people can invest in, in Alberta and what role it can play, um, you know, on a global stage. And uh, it was especially interesting coming off the heels of the Keystone decision that came from the Biden administration. Mm -hmm. um, and also, you know, there's a lot of interesting politics going on in the U.S. right now, um, with the Democrats having a narrow majority um, and uh, trying to get things done, and just how he has to navigate, um, you know, talking to Republicans and talking to Democrats um, and represent the interests of of Alberta. So I have an article on that that should be out soon. Cool. That sounds interesting. Uh, and what else is happening in the world of Western Canadian construction? <laughs> Yeah, there, there's a North Shore company that I'm going to be trying to talk to this week. And they, they're they trying to do a new method of speeding up uh, construction and, and making things a little bit cheaper, a little bit easier um, for housing. Um, you know, we, we've written a lot about modular construction, prefabrication, mass timber, all these different things. Um, and their approach uh, is to do instead of doing kind of one-off house houses, they, they, they want to have uh, like uh, plans that can be replicated over and over and over um, to take away some of that design cost, some of that cost there and some of that time there and just repeatability. Mm -hmm. um, and then kind of have these kind of standard housing designs that can be obviously tweaked with builders and then kind of make them available to the industry. So um, cool. I'm going to be reaching out to them, and uh, we'll see what happens. That sounds extremely interesting. And in news from the East, staff writer for the Daily Commercial News, Don Wall, is looking into how one union council, the Ontario Iron Workers District Council, is ramping up its workforce development and training in anticipation of years of work on new transit projects in Ontario. Don spoke to Kevin Brayenton of the Iron Workers after the union received a big training grant from the province. Here's how it works. In April 2019, when Ontario Premier Doug Ford announced the province would be spending $28.5 billion on four new transit lines, including over $11 billion on Toronto's Ontario line, Bryanton told Don he began to run the numbers. The new line, targeted for completion by 2028, will be 15.6 kilometers long with 15 stations proposed. Bryanton said the Ontario line is huge. Quote, I mean, $11.8 billion on the Ontario line. We know there's going to be lots of action with all those bridges and tunnels. End quote. The civil works portion, including the rebar work, is done at the front end, and that's usually 30% of the total package, Branson said. He figures there will be 400 to 600 of his iron workers engaged on the project for five years, so that's half a decade of good paydays. And Daily Commercial News staff writer Angela Gismondi spoke to Victoria Mencinelli, Director of Public Relations, Communications, Marketing, and Strategic Partnerships for the Laborers International Union of North America, otherwise known as LEUNA, who was recently appointed to Ontario's Task Force on Women in the Economy. It's a new task force established by the provincial government that aims to address the unique and disproportionate economic barriers women face and how women can participate in the economic recovery following the pandemic. Angela is also working on a project store at 300 Queens Key at the Bend, a new community on Toronto's waterfront. She spoke with Avison Young and the project developers about the office space and the business community in the area. If you'd like to hear more episodes of TCR Express, you can check us out at Amazon Music, Apple Music, Spotify, or on the Daily Commercial News or Journal of Commerce websites. Thanks for listening, everybody.